So what I was just showing you are some images that I refer to as high key shots that I've taken over the years. And what I love about these images is the simplicity or the minimalism of them and the bright negative space contrasting against those darker silhouettes is just so striking. So if you caught my previous video, you'll note that today's topic is opposite of that one where I talked about creating negative space against white birds. And in that case, the negative space is black or dark, um, also creating a very striking, minimalistic type of scene. So I want to show you how I edit these images in Photoshop. And so first of all, um, in order to get a shot like this, you have to have a lot of sun and the sun needs to be in front of you. So your subjects are backlit. And if you have darker subjects, they will be silhouetted. And so will their reflections on the water. So typically what I do is I overexpose the scene by about one to two stops. Now what this does is it brightens up the water and the sky, but um, it helps also to maintain the darkness of the silhouette. So you want to keep the detail of those silhouettes. If you overexpose way too much, um, the brightness kind of bleeds into those darker areas and, and you're losing detail as a result. So once you bring your images into your editing software, the main thing you're going to do is you're going to brighten the bright areas and you're going to darken the dark areas. So for this video, I'm going to show you how I edit this image and convert it to this image by using Camera Raw and Photoshop. Because I do all my edits in Photoshop, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is open the image into Camera Raw before I bring it into Photoshop. And so that's where we are right here. So notice this panel on the right. And I'm going to, you see basic, I'm going to open that up. And there are some sliders here that I can use to help me begin the editing process for this image. Now what I, what I want to do with this image is darken these shadowy areas here. And uh, the birds, I want to darken those. I want this to be all silhouette. Um, here. And then I want to um, brighten the bright areas so you can see there's some shadows in the water here. I want to get rid of those. So I can do some of that here in Camera Raw, but not all of it. So I look at these sliders and maybe with the highlights I can draw those over to the right. So notice um, the water areas are getting brighter. And um, shadows, I can take shadows to the left and look at the birds and the sticks getting darker. That's great. Um, I could take the slider, the blacks slider, and shift that to the right as well. And then whites, I could do the same to the right. And look at that. That's a dramatic effect. Now, I don't want to go too crazy with that, because look at these areas down here. I want to maintain this reflection here. Um, so if I draw too far, I'm going to lose some of that, so I want to, want to keep some of that. All right, <clears throat> that looks good, so I'm ready to bring this into Photoshop now. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and the image is it's almost completed. Um, we, we've got some things to clean up here. You can still see some shadows in the water clean up some of the dark areas as well. Now, um, other images like this might need a little more work. So what I'm going to show you here will apply to all of those types of images. Um, you might not see as dramatic of an effect in this particular image because it's, you know, in Camera Raw, I was able to really do much of what I needed to do with this image. So, um, so with that, uh, I want to just mention one thing um, before I talk about the editing. Let's talk about the image itself, because if you are wanting to take these types of photographs where you are emphasizing silhouettes contrasted boldly against this bright negative space. And believe me, these images are very powerful. And um, 
and people do like to see them in print with a nice black frame around them. So, um, so I love these images, and I started taking them back in 2009. And so um, this particular one is among maybe uh, 50 images I took that particular day. It's not one that I would choose to edit or work with, and there are uh, some lots of reasons for that, but the main reason is because there's just so many elements here, but they're all kind of jumbled up together, and um, there's there's some confusion going on here. If if you look at this area here um, on the right, um, notice these birds, and this you know these birds are are mixed up with uh, these these sticks, and this bird is impaled by that stick. Um, there's no clear distinction or separation among them. And that is, I think, very important to have when you are taking this type of an image and you're trying to compose these elements um, in your image. You want to have a clear separation among them. Here's another example. I love these birds up here on the top. This one in particular, I just love it. Uh, but what ruins it for me is this guy right here. <laughs> so he kind of interrupts the scene. And, uh, you know, um, if he wasn't there, it would look, I think, so much better. Uh, so you really got to think about the composition with these type of images because it all depends on how the elements relate to each other and how they relate to the negative space around them. So with that, uh, let's, uh, let's edit this um, image. Now, uh, well, one last thing. Um, if you look over here on the left, you're going to see I have this panel that you may or may not recognize. It is the TK panel uh, that I had purchased um, as an add-on for Photoshop. And um, the, the primary or the most powerful uh, tool coming out of this panel is the luminosity masks that you can access with just one click of the button. That is a mask right there. Now, I can use that for this image very easily. And, um, you know, that would be how I would actually edit this image is just by creating a luminosity mask which basically allows me to select the area that I want to edit. If you saw my previous video, you will have seen that I made selections to my image without using luminosity masks. I didn't use this panel over here. I'm going to do the same thing for this image as well. I'm going to show you the old-fashioned way of editing this image. And if I used a luminosity mask, it would go a little bit faster, but really not much. And the reason for that is because there is such a bold contrast between the dark and bright areas. Photoshop will have no problem distinguishing between this dark area from this bright area. So not all images are like this. So luminosity masks really shine when you don't have as clear of a distinction between one area to another. So uh, I just wanted to mention that because um, it, it is a tool that I can use. It's a tool that you can use, but for this type of image, don't feel like you need to go out and purchase the TK panel because you're not going to need it. Um, as you're going to see here, it's very simple what I'm going to do. All right, what I need to do are two things. I need to brighten up those areas to get rid of these shadows here and maybe clean up the dark areas, although uh, Camera Raw earlier did that quite well. So um, first thing I'm going to do is come down here to the uh, Adjustment Layers menu. That's that black and white cookie you see down there. I'm going to open up Curves. That creates this layer here. Let's go to the Curves panel where you see the, the line has an anchor point way up at the top. I'm going to click on that and drag to the right. Now, what did I just do? Let's take a look. See these, this area here where I had some shadows there? I'm going to go back to the original here. Notice the shadows. So by dragging to the left, I can get rid of those guys. All right now, I want to be careful, though, because take a look at what's going on here. Um, let's go back 
to the original, right? I don't want to get rid of everything, so I'm just going to be kind of conservative on that. So just draw it over a little bit to the left. All right, so that looks okay so far. Now, the dark areas. Um, let's look at the dark areas a little closer. Uh, I'm going to hit my space key that, and hold it down. That allows me to drag across. So notice this bird here has this um, shadowy area. It's a little bit brighter than black. I want to darken that. right? I want to you know, clean that up a little bit. And there might be some other birds um, doing the same thing as well, like this one right here. So um, we're going to now create another adjustment layer. Curves. And there is the layer, and this time I'm going to go down to the bottom, anchor point, and I'm going to drag it to the right. All right, so let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Drag to the right. So here's the original right there. Drag to the right, get rid of it. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's just take a look here. I'm going to take um, my the icons next to your layers. Remember, you can unhide or hide your, uh, your um, layers. And I'm going to hide them by clicking and dragging on those icons. So there's the before and there's the after. I think that looks pretty good. I might come down here and maybe, well, let's see, if that makes a difference. Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to leave it like that. That looks good. We can still see those reflections quite nicely. All right, now at this point, what you want to do is you want to zoom in and clean up. And so what you have to make sure you do, though, is highlight your background. And I'm going to zoom in and notice these little areas here that I want to get rid of. All right, so um, I've got a couple tools that I can use. I have the healing brush right here. If I take the healing brush, remember your bracket keys, you can make this cursor bigger or smaller. And I just basically click on the areas I want to get rid of, like so, like so, like so. And I just would just kind of keep doing that and um, just kind of go through the image. And, and that's the tedious part, remember. So hit the space bar, drag across and take a look, get rid of some of these right here. I would probably get rid of this right here. Um, let me show you one part here that I would get rid of. So this little bright area here doesn't need to be there. So the other way I can do that is here's the clone tool and I come over here and I can increase the size of my cursor a little bit and what the clone tool requires you to do is to uh, identify the area you want to clone and then um, brush it into the area you want cloned. So um, if that makes any sense. So what you do here is, first of all, I want to take this and I want to make it black, just like this area here. So I'm going to ident identify this spot here. I'm going to hit the Alt key and click, or Option key and click. So by doing that, look, it recognizes this area here. And I come down here now with the cursor and just drag. And notice the, the little crossbar there. Every time I move, it moves. All right, so you have to be careful with the clone tool because it's going to kind of stay in that spot and as you drag, it's going to move. So if I come over here and do something, um, let's say right here, look at what happens. Okay, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. All right, so clone tool, healing brush, you're going to go through your image, clean it up, um, and uh, get rid of anything that's distracting. And remember, when you print these, you're going to see those distractions. You might not see them um, in your Instagram, but you will see them in a print. So you want to really pay close attention to detail. So I still have some cleaning up to do. Obviously, there's my clone tool. Um, you know, and and I would get rid of you know a lot of different things here. But for now, uh, let's leave it. And one last thing we're going to do. Notice here, this looks blue. And there's another area up here that actually looks kind of brown. Remember, this is a color photograph. It's not a black and white. So I can get rid of those tones very easily, however, by coming to my um, Adjustment Layers menu again, and this time clicking on black and white. Take a look what happened here with that black and white. 
got rid of it, right? Get rid of those tones. You've got a black and white image now. So that's it. And there it is. That is your image completed. And let's take a look at the before and after. Remember, not a dramatic change here, but um, that can vary from photo to photo. I'm going to hide my um, adjustments. There's the uh, before, after. Very nice.